A while back, one of my Patreons asked how Tesla Energy can become as big as the automotive side, and we finally may have found an answer. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. In late 2019, Elon predicted really crazy growth for as far into the future as I can imagine. It would be difficult to overstate the degree to which Tesla energy is going to be a major part of Tesla's activity in the future, a point he reiterated throughout 2020. Well, last week we learned about Gambit Energy, a grid-scale battery being constructed in Texas. Some sleuthing done by the Bloomberglers determined it was owned by Tesla, since the company's incorporation has a Tesla address, and the tight-lipped workers at the site were wearing Tesla hard hats. But what is it, and why is it so important? First of all, what is a Megapack? So your power supply has three basic components base power generation. These are the plants that are always on, always generating more or less, and always providing some, generally most, of the power. These can ramp up or down a bit, but not very quickly. Renewables. These can be modestly predicted with the weather forecast. You can have a pretty good idea a few days in advance how much average cloud cover or wind to expect. And at least with wind turbines, they can be throttled down pretty effectively to avoid overproduction. Peaker plants. When the grid falls short of energy demand, these plants, usually natural gas plants, can fire up pretty quickly to cover the gap. But by pretty quickly, I mean tens of seconds to a few minutes. They're not as quick to power down, so peaker plants are by far the most expensive type of energy generation. A megapack replaces the peaker plant, or at least diminishes its role in the grid. The idea behind a grid-scale battery is that it can kick in within milliseconds on the demand side and recharge with surplus power on the supply side. So it's faster, cheaper, and reduces the need for curtailment, which is when the power supply is artificially lowered to match the demand. The Megapack buys power when it's cheap and supplies power when it's expensive. The first of these huge installations Tesla built was at the Hornsdale Power Reserve in Southern Australia at an estimated cost of $100 million. It sounds really expensive, and on the balance sheet it, it looks pretty expensive, until you look at the actual savings. The systems work so well that it only took a bit over a year to break even. It was such a good deal that they have significantly expanded it. In 2019 alone, the Hornsdale Power Reserve saved over $119 million. These megapacks can literally pay for themselves in a single year. But even with the costs and benefits so apparent, utilities have been reluctant to buy them. And when they do, Tesla Energy makes a ridiculously small profit, and in some quarters, no profit at all. So why bust your butt trying to make a sale when there's only 10 million in profit, plus a lengthy window of required maintenance? Why not just do it yourself? So Gambit Energy, AKA Tesla, spends $100 million to build a plant that could conceivably return that much revenue every year. That's where we are now. So let's imagine a scenario where Tesla builds one of these every month. Now, they're not going to be highly profitable in every market, but with more than a thousand peaker plants operating in the U.S. alone, there's plenty of opportunity to pick and choose where they're going to be the best bet. And as time goes on, they'll get cheaper to build with battery prices still falling. That would enable the installation of larger and larger mega packs at the same cost, thus being able to maintain the same levels of profit. And of course, economies of scale will drive down costs as well, since it's always cheaper to manufacture millions of widgets rather than thousands of them. So let's take a gander at the math, assuming one new peaker plant replacement every month. By the end of a year, you'd be down $650 million, but already generating enough revenue to cover the cost of new installations, with lifetime costs falling every month from there. The dollars in this graph, by the way, are in millions. At the end of two years, the revenue would have clawed back the entire $650 million deficit, and from there, it's nothing but blue skies ahead. Again, the graph is in millions, and you can see the revenue has curved back up and the project has finally broken even. 
On month 36, it starts to get a bit more exciting, being up 1.6 billion lifetime on the endeavor and generating $192 million in profit per month. Checking back in at month 60, it's up almost $9 billion for the lifetime, with the profit closing in on $400 million per month. I can do this all day, but instead, let's just skip all the way out to the 10th year when 120 megapacks have been installed and connected to the grid. The 10-year profit could be $47.5 billion with a profit of $892 million per month. This graph is just ridiculous. The cost of new installations at that point would be almost irrelevant, practically a rounding error. They could install eight instead of the standard one during the month and still show profit for that month. Though around the 10 year mark, there would likely begin to be significant costs related to the replacement of older facilities. But when there's this much money on the table, it hardly matters. Of course, there's some caveats. I don't believe Tesla has short-term plans to build one new installation per month in-house for themselves, but if this works, and there's no reason to think it wouldn't, considering the successes enjoyed by their customers already, this will likely ramp up to that pace and maybe even exceed it. I could see Tesla getting out of the business of selling grid-scale mega packs entirely, or at least adjusting their pricing to reflect the long-term cash potential. Maybe they would still sell it for $100 million, but insist on some percentage of savings as part of an ongoing lease or royalty payment. And if the utility doesn't agree to those terms, or it's somehow legally prohibited in that region or country, Tesla will still have endless demand in-house, and those places can buy a different system from a different company. So to answer the question of how Tesla will get their energy division revenue up to the levels of their automotive division, the clearest answer today is by owning their own Megapacks. If this division was spun out as its own separate company, it would be an IPO for the ages. And that's to say nothing about the revenue potential of Powerwall and vehicle-to-grid technology, which are both still in their infancy though, offer more potential savings to consumers than to Tesla itself. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing and or leaving a comment below so you'll be entered into the giveaway at the end of the month, or by becoming a Patreon so I can inch that much closer to going full time. My Patreons get bonus content, early access, and an extra entry for a whole separate giveaway. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me an earload in the comments and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in the mega yachts for all future where us shareholders look increasingly likely to live. This is not investment advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I do your own research.